Welcome back to Glass Science. This is Matt Yasa. I'll be going over some of the footage from the last experiment and kind of clear things up, kind of explain some things. And I'll go ahead and put up this temperature scale. It's kind of an estimate of how the heat would radiate through the glass uh, from the torch. And you'll notice the gradient isn't as linear, so it kind of allows me to hold it towards the middle, not so far to the, towards the end. Now, if you look at the scale, as you increase the temperature, you get more uh, energetic molecules, you get a gas, and with increased pressure, it kind of restricts it down uh, into the molecules down to a solid. And then so the critical point would be hitting the equilibrium between them. But it's good to note that each, uh, the pressure and temperature are kind of conjoined forces. You can't do one without a change with the other one. One thing also, you have to kind of consider the water droplet as a whole, a droplet, but then also as a component of smaller droplets. And it sounds kind of confusing. I think a good way to think about it is a car. You know, you have uh, a vehicle, you drive to work, you know, gets you around. Uh, but then on the other end, you can, can think of it as four wheels and an engine. You know, a component of parts that's kind of sharing its force and working together. Now I wanted to go ahead and demonstrate that glass stand I made in the water distillery video. Now I wanted to include this one because it's great for beginner glass blowers. It's a little bit similar to the glass chain video except you're working with a much larger area to bend. It can be a little bit harder with the boro uh, just because you need a higher heat that wants to radiate out quicker so you have less time to work with it. But then normal glass, the soda line will have its own challenges. It'll want to crack and pop on you. And a nice even heat to get a nice even curve. It starts bending a little bit with gravity. And I'll go ahead and grab my tweezers and start bending it around. So it's starting to get kind of hard to bend around because of the extra weight on the end. So I'm going to try to get it all the way towards the rod and tag the end to it. And that just means to get just a little bit melted in and I'll go in later and and fully melted in. And the equipment cost to begin glass blowing can be a little bit more expensive. It'd be at least a few hundred uh, just for the torch and safety equipment, maybe a little bit of glass. And that could get you started on some small marbles, small, small pendants. Uh, it's pretty much, you can practice all the techniques and make pretty much anything you, you could, you'd want, but it'd just be on a smaller scale. And with that tagged up, I'm going to go ahead and punt it up to the other side because it's just going to be impossible to melt that in real well with all the weight on the end here. And some people will try to save some money and go without the oxygen and just do a single gas torch like MAP gas or just a propane. And it does work, but personally, I would recommend trying to get the oxygen and doing a surface mix or a premix torch. I'm definitely going to be putting up a video more about torches and what you need to get started. Now with the loop uh, about 80% done, I'm going to go ahead and take off this other rod and start to melt that last bit in and get it all formed. I'm going to put an intense heat into the glass, get the entire area white hot, a very soupy hot. And then I'm going to have to rotate a bit quicker to keep it from slumping out and deforming. And then it's going to end up melting down into kind of a bar or a straight edge. And then I'll flick it real quick here and that'll give me my finished shape. I'll go ahead and slow it down so you can see it happen. And boom, there it is. A nice even curve. Now I do need to level it out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and soak in some nice even heat into as much as I can here. More towards the bottom just to keep the punty from losing stability. And a slight press, kind of a slight uh, laying action. Sometimes you just want to let it rest there for a couple seconds. And with that finished, I'll go ahead and start working on the legs. When you're attaching like this, you want to heat up both areas very, very hot so they flow together when they touch. So when it's too cold, they won't end up melting together, but end up fusing together. And I kind of like to think of it as one side of the glass is kind of forming to the other side but not the inverse. You know, you want both sides to form together. But then when you do do pendants and marbles and a lot of projects really, uh, and you want a fused rod, like kind of what you're seeing here on the other end with my left hand, then you can tap it off and break it, 
break that connection very quickly, save time, and it'll also leave very little glass that you have to fix later. I'll go ahead and go in with the graphite paddle to finish off the feet for the legs. And also one thing real quick, uh, it's easier to balance objects on three legs than it is four. Because with four legs, if one's short, it'll just wobble back and forth. But with three legs, if it's short, the entire object will slant. And now with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and overcharge the explosive spinner. I'm gonna put two fireworks in it and we'll see what happens. That banging noise was kind of weird. I don't know if that was a piece of firework hitting uh, one of the tanks I have for the compression system. That's something I'm still working on for the new torch, which I almost have, I'm getting really close. And here's a bunch of the debris from the fireworks. Let me go ahead and clean this up. Oh no, it's, it's broken. It broke. Now I knew that was kind of a risk. I mean, uh, the walls weren't as thick as a glass cannon. Mind you, those, those are about half an inch thick. Uh, but here's what it looks like. And now it's time to slow down that beautiful glass footage. Oh, got knocked outside before it exploded, huh? Thanks for watching. Have a good night.